Hello friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. My name's Tom. My wife Melissa is running the camera. Today we're going to do a recipe called Ranch Pork Chops. I got this recipe about seven or eight years ago from a lady named Barb Carney who is actually an associate pastor at our church. It is a fabulous recipe. Number one, it's really easy. There's almost nothing to it. Number two, you fix it in a slow cooker. So there's not a lot of work, it does the work for you. And number three, it's delicious. So let's get started doing ranch pork chops today. First, you're going to need pork chops. We always use eight chops, even though there's just two of us because this is such a good recipe, we just eat a lot of it. Now you can use boneless pork chops or you can use bone in. Either one works fine, we've used both. There's really not a lot of difference. The ones we have today are bone in pork chops. These are some pork chops we got from our local Mennonite market and they always have really good meat. So eight pork chops of your choice. Then you're going to need a 22 ounce can of cream of chicken soup. If you can't find the large family size 22 ounce cans, you can use two of the 10 and a half ounce cans and that works just as well. So either two of the small 10 and a half ounce cans or one of these family size 22 ounce cans, cream of chicken soup. Then you're going to need one quarter cup of Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning mix. Now, we buy this tub of Hidden Valley Ranch at Costco, but if you can't find the tub to uh, measure it out in a quarter of a cup, two packs of Hidden Valley Ranch mix is the exact same thing. So either two of the packs, just like out of a box, or if you have the large tub, it's one quarter cup of the ranch mix and you just mix that together and put it in a crock pot. All you do is take your soup and mix it, put it in a bowl and mix in the ranch dressing mix. It's really pretty simple. And I'm telling you, this is such a good meal. Our kids love this meal too. Um, when they were living at home, we fix this many times. We could fix this in the morning, throw it in the crock pot. It doesn't take but just a couple of minutes to get it in. And then when we got home from work, I got home from school, it was pretty much ready to eat. So all you have to do is stir those two things together. We actually ate lunch yesterday with Pastor Barb our church's heritage Sunday school class, which is, I guess we can say, they're our senior citizen class, went to a restaurant in Lexington to eat lunch yesterday, and Melissa and I were fortunate enough to get to go with them. And Pastor Barb sat beside of us, and so I told her that I was going to make this recipe today and asked if it was okay for me to mentioned her and she was very gracious and said, of course you can use it and of course you can mention me, it'll be fine. Now, I'm just taking a little bit of this and putting it in the bottom of my crock pot just because I want those pork chops on the bottom to get some flavor in them from this. It doesn't have to be covered. You can just put a little bit in the bottom and then we will just layer our chops. I like to put them in as close and tight as I can get them, just to get them all in there. Now I've got a layer in, so I'm gonna put just a little scoop of the soup and ranch dressing on top of them, because we want them to have that flavor. So in it goes. And we'll do more pork chops. Put that 
another layer right on top. Let's see, I think that'll fit right there. And some more soup. Honestly, you can make as many layers of this as you want to. And you know, if you're having a crowd, this is an easy, easy recipe to adjust. If you want to double it, it's very simple. All you have to do is double it. And in fact, you know, if there's only a couple of you and you think four pork chops are plenty, all you have to do is cut it in half. The way you would do that is use four pork chops, one 10 and a half ounce can of soup, and two tablespoons or one packet of the Hidden Valley Ranch. And that would give you half this recipe. Have you ever done this in the oven instead of a slow cooker? I have not, but I think it would work. We talked about that earlier. Well, I think the last time we made this. Um, and I don't know why you couldn't do it in the oven, do it low and slow. I would think maybe at 250 degrees. Um, and that's what makes them so tender, I think. The crock pot just, you know, of course cooks it really slow at a low temperature. And it just, <laughs> it tenderizes these pork chops to the point that they literally fall apart. Um, you have to be kind of careful when you take them out of the crock pot. You have to get under them because they are so tender, they really do just want to fall apart. Does it take less time if you have boneless pork chops? No, no, it's the same time. That's a good question. Um, it takes the same amount of time, boneless or bone-in. And I'm just gonna tell you, I like the boneless pork chops. You know, they're easy to eat. There's no bone in them. But I really feel like pork chops with a bone in the chop has a little better flavor. Um, I think that that bone gives the pork chop a little flavor. So I like bone in, but we use boneless a lot just because they're convenient. So you can use either one. Doesn't change the time. Once you have them in, you're going to set your crock pot to low and leave them alone for six hours. That's all you have to do. Mix your soup and your Hidden Valley um, seasoning, ranch seasoning, and layer them with the pork chops, layer it with the pork chops. Six hours on low and you'll have a meal. When these are finished at about 4.30, we will come back and let you see them. It's been six hours, so I hope our pork chops are plenty done and ready to eat. Let's take them out. Ooh, there goes the steam. Oh, they smell good. Can you get a picture of that? Mm -hmm. They smell really good too. They really do, don't they? All right. Let's put them on a plate just to get them out of here. I'll tell you another good thing about this recipe is that the soup and the um, Hidden Valley Ranch Mix make a delicious gravy. It really makes a good gravy. And the gravy's good to use on the pork chops. It's also really good on mashed potatoes. So of course, we had to make mashed potatoes tonight. You have to have good mashed potatoes with gravy. Ooh, I don't know if I can get them all six on here. Well, you could leave one in there, I guess, till we eat. Yeah. All right. There are the pork chops. And I'm going to take this last one and put it on a plate. I'll get us a little gravy ladle. Put some gravy on my mashed potatoes.
Corn and mashed potatoes were always Caroline's favorite combination. Anytime that we cooked, which was most nights, when our kids were home, we had sit down meals of meat and vegetables. But if I fixed mashed potatoes, our youngest daughter Caroline would say, where's the corn? And if I fixed corn, she would say, where's the mashed potatoes? <laughs> That was a winning combination for her. She just felt like she couldn't have one without the other. She needed both of those on her plate if she had one of them. All right. I hope you give the ranch pork chops a try. And I hope you love them as much as we do. By the way, this is our corn pudding recipe. And we do have a video of the corn pudding. So I think it's going to be the one right before this recipe. So if you want to do corn pudding and mashed potatoes to go with your pork chops, that recipe's there. As always, we are so happy that you watch our videos and so many of you have written really nice things and we appreciate those nice comments. If you would, we would appreciate you going right below this video and giving us a thumbs up just to say you like the video. And if you haven't already, go on this side, down on the right side of the video, right below the video, and click the subscribe button. You only have to do that once. And click the little notification bell right beside of it. That way you'll get a notification every time we add a new one. And of course, we would appreciate it if you would pass our videos along, post them. If you want the written recipe, those are always right below our videos. All you have to do is click on that description box where you see the title of this recipe, and that box will open when you click on it, and Melissa will have put the written recipe there so you can see it written out. All right. You thank gotta you take so a much. bite. Oh, I guess I'd better, hadn't I? Let me grab a fork. The best part. I was gonna wait and eat with you, but maybe I should go ahead. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look how tender that is. These, <laughs> these are always so tender. It's just crazy. They're hot. They're really hot. <laughs> Honestly, that just melts in your mouth. That seemed to tear apart real easily. I didn't tear apart. It just falls apart. Look at that. Let me zoom in on it. I mean, literally, it just falls apart. You can't even pick it up, really. Mm. Gosh, that is so good. All right. Thank you for watching. Time for dinner. And remember, yeah, it is time for dinner. <laughs> you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Merry Christmas. Have a good evening.